Good morning, church. Good morning, online church. Let's rise together. God has given us a beautiful day to sing praise. Amen. Oh my goodness, it's so nice out. So let's lift our voices, our hearts, our hands, our spirits as we celebrate the everlasting love of God. It's better than life. Love is everlasting, it's an everlasting love. Mercy is as new as every rising of the sun. And no loving kindness, loving kindness is better than life. Your grace is all sufficient. Your grace is all sufficient, it's an all sufficient grace. Your power and your glory are forever on display. and they're 
moving right with us. Ah. It looks great. I love that you carried all the way to the back you of the room. The Thank you for that. That's good. Thank you. Yeah. Well, welcome, church. We're so grateful that you are here today. Turn to someone to say this morning and say, welcome. I am glad that you are home. And if you're at home, say something to the person that you're with or something outside. I am glad that you are home today, Tim. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> I'm Lauren. I'm the associate pastor here, and I'm grateful to be here today. My name is Tim Mullins, and I am a member and a member of the Board of Directors. And we would love to know who you are by filling out an attendance card, and you can do that in a number of ways. You can reach out for your cell phone and scan the QR code in front of you, and if you're in the room, in the chair, or all of you on the screen, or you can go to mccgsl.org live and fill it out there. That way we can know not only who you are, but what's on your mind and heart today so we can be with you in community throughout the week. We also invite you, if you're at home, to get something, a uh, ca candle and something for communion to celebrate with us later in the service. Say hello in the chat. You can also share your prayer requests and things of that sort. We are listening. So we have some announcements for the ways that you uh, can engage in our church throughout the week. Uh, and this week, we're really excited because we have a special program that's going to happen uh, this, starting this week all the way through June. So did you know that 10 minutes of meditation can help you feel less stress and anxiety? It's up to you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to meditate. <laughs> Maybe even 10 seconds then. <laughs> right. Sounds like you should ten, be in this class. <laughs> 10 seconds could do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Enter a time of guided meditation with us on Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. via Zoom. For about 30 minutes, um, our own J.D. Skaggs is beginning this Tuesday on May 23rd. So that's this Tuesday. Who couldn't use some serenity in their life, right? Amen. We're excited to have game night back. And so the first Friday of June, we'll meet at Perennial Ales, which is right down the street for some outdoor games. There'll be some lawn games there, like ping pong and um, what's the cornhole? Yeah, cornhole or whatever you know it to be. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, great. Uh, or so beanbag that, toss. Bean, that's the other one. Beanbag toss. Yeah. Whatever. That's boring. Anyway, so come and join us for game night. You can get a beer, an empanada at Perennial Ales and join us out on the patio for game night. Nice. It's a great way to also get introduced to more folks from the community. So a special event is also coming up. You may have heard about it. Um, so we have a special opportunity to celebrate <laughs> the marriage and union of Reverend Lauren and Asati. <laughs> That's happening at our own reception that we're throwing in their honor on June 3rd from 3 to 6 p.m. Now, we do ask that you RSV for that, RSVP for that, so that we can anticipate how many folks are coming and make sure that we can um, properly accommodate. You can RSVP through our website and go to the programming page. So we're at the end of May, so that means next month is what? Pride Month, yes, and there's so many opportunities for us to, June, yes, June, Very true. also known as Pride Month, very good, very good. Uh, so you can participate in lots of ways through our church, we're going to be at St. Charles, we'll be at Pride Fest, of course, remember that last Sunday of the month, our worship will be at Pride Fest instead of in this building, and we're excited to say that we will be able to stream that service out, so if you're at home or aren't able to make it there, we can stream that, so we're really grateful uh, for Holy Communion, a Episcopal Church for putting that to part of the program together. And so there's lots and lots of ways that you can volunteer and you can uh, be a part of that. We're looking for folks to manage some of the volunteers throughout the day for both St. Charles and for Pride Fest in St. Louis. And for any of that, you can contact Christine, who is happy to uh, tell you more about that. And then we'll have a meeting where we can divvy up responsibilities and that sort of thing. So see Christine afterward or email her at info at mccgsl.org. There's also a oh. sign-up sheet in the back. Christine is super on it, underneath a bulletin board. So on your way out, if you're in the room today, you can sign your name up for something that you're excited about. And I know y'all are excited because you're talking. And so I know yeah. you're excited. All right. <laughs> MCC, this very congregation, MCC GSL, is celebrating 50 years of service to the community. Yeah. As, yes. And as part of that, we have a grand gala planned in October. 
we're preparing a slideshow of 50 years together, so we really need your contribution to that. Please look through your old pictures and anything that you have that you would like to share. Maybe even a couple you don't really want to share, right? <laughs> you know, when you have that bouffant hairdo. Ooh, please share those. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and share those with us um, for the slideshow. Again, see the wonderful Ms. Christine down here for our help on how to do that. <laughs> So many of our members are at home every single Sunday. We don't see them in the room, but they are present with us. And two of those people who faithfully come every week are Judy Shute and Barb Young. And this week they've offered flowers in honor of the tech team who makes sure that they can access every single week. So thank you. And thank you to Barb and Judy and to our whole online community for you are just as a part of us as anyone in the room. So we're so Amen. grateful that we are all together and we can be together because of your work and ministry over there in the corner. Thank you so Amen. much. Yes. Now let us gather and worship. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Here in this place, a new light is streaming. Shadows of doubt vanish away. See in this space, a here to you in the light of the day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in our spirits in flame. Call to us now and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound of our name. I'd invite the choir to come on up and gather with us up on the stage. <clears throat> light this candle to represent the light of the Holy One, that light that lives in each of us, God's sons and daughters, called to be a light to the world. I invite you now to breathe in, breathe in the love that is you breathe out the love that is you that you should offer to the world breathe in and know 
that the spirit of the Holy One is ever present. Breathe out and release yourself of everything that keeps you from moving forward, knowing that the scripture says that goodness and mercy follows us and it follows us as we move. Holy Spirit, we thank you for this place. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this family that has gathered together. We've come together as a sign of unity because of the work that you did on the cross. And that work on the cross was done so that every living creature would come to know that they are beautifully and wonderfully made in your image. And because of that work, we are charged with the work of reaching out to every sister and brother who does not know. We thank you, Lord, for blessing this service. We thank you that as we've gathered, that we will never leave the same. And as we embark on a new week, we thank you, Lord, now for the angels that go before us, the angels that are encamped around us, the angels that will help us in whatever thing we are challenged with, knowing that if the challenge has come, that the way has already been made because it is the promise that you made to us as your sons and daughters. And we walk in it not by what we see with our eyes, but because of the promise that we hold in our hearts, a promise made to us that a, from a God that cannot lie. We thank you again just because. We don't ask for anything. We just come today to say thank you for all the marvelous things that you have done, even the things that we haven't acknowledged. Today we stop and we don't ask. We just say thank you. Amen. So this morning we have uh, the great pleasure of being able to welcome Diana into membership. So if you want to join me here on stage, you can give her a warm welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so Diana was a part of our last group of folks who came through membership class and wanted to join today uh, so her family could be here too. And so we're so grateful that we can all be here together. So uh, Diana has come to us to be a part of this universal and holy church in the specific way of Metropolitan Community Church. You've been with us for over, yeah, I was going to say almost two years, huh? a year and a half, and it's been such a joy to get to know Diana and her family, and so we welcome you all today. So may you hear these words from scripture as you prepare your heart to officially join the church as a member. You are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are equally citizens with saints and members of the household of God. Built upon a foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus alone being the cornerstone, in whom whole, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple, which is us as well. In, you, in whom you are built as a dwelling place for God. And so we are so grateful that you are here today. So we have a few questions for you to answer in front of everyone that you know these answers already because we've asked you them before. So do you embrace Diana, the God of unconditional love who created life to be enjoyed and celebrated, who created you for the purpose of being in loving relationship with you? And do you turn from all that is unloving and unkind and, un and oppressive, both in yourself and in the world, and desire for new life in the freedom that Jesus modeled for us? Yes. Yes. Do you promise to participate in the covenant that forms the life and mission of this congregation, sharing regularly in worship, giving of your financial resources, offering your service to the church with your time, your talents, your caring, and committing yourself to a process of growth? 
And so we welcome you, Diana, and we do so by reaffirming our commitment and our covenant as a family. So we invite you to rise as you are able and join with us in this reaffirmation of our membership. So with joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you to share with us in the ministry of God. We promise to uphold you, that your faith may be increased, your hope confirmed, and that you may be perfected in love. As members of MCC GSL, we renew our covenant to in the ministries of our church with our presence, our giving, and our service, committing ourselves to the ongoing process of growth. And so, Diana, we welcome you, and with the Spirit of God who is in all of us, we thank you for your yes. <laughs> Here you, go. you may be seated. Our contemporary reading this morning is from Letters to a Young Poet by Rainier Maria Rilke. Have patience with everything unresolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves as if they were locked rooms or books written in a very foreign language. Don't search for the answers, which could not be given to you now because you would not be able to live them. And the point is to live everything. Live the questions now. Perhaps then, someday far in the future, you will gradually, without even noticing it, live your way into the answer. Perhaps you do carry within you the possibility of creating and forming as an especially blessed and pure way of living. Train yourself for that, but take whatever comes with great trust, and as long as it comes out of your will, out of some need of your inmost self, then take it upon yourself. Please rise as you are able in body or spirit. Our scripture reading today is from Ephesians 4, 1 through 7, and 14 through 16. Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle, be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and creator of all, who is over all, in all, and living through all. However, God has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. And then the 14th through 16th. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to tr trick us with lies so clever that they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Should I be home? 
particular version of that song, but I love that song, so that was so beautiful. Thank you. There we go. So we are at the end of our series of Altar in the World. I hope that you've enjoyed as we've uh, kind of considered the ways that we bump into altars, we bump into God in our lives, and we notice things from a slightly different perspective. Even listening to a familiar song that many of us know in a new way can be one of those. Amen. Amen the ways that we can be opened uh, in unexpected moments, especially. And so today, we come into thinking about our purpose, which is a good way of kind of wrapping up a series, right? What do we do with this? Sure, we can notice God in everything, but what do we do with it, right? It's a great question that we always ask ourselves, or that I get lots of emails about. What do we do with that? (laughs) So I'm reminded when I was thinking about um, this uh, letter from Paul this week that You know, there's lots of ways that we try to find meaning and purpose in our lives and ways that we measure purpose and meaning, right? Like when you go to a party, there's a way that you're, you know, having some fun, getting to know people, seeing people that you already know and love. Um, But there's also a way that you're trying to, like, figure out who's who in the room, right? So in St. Louis, what's the question that you ask to see? Where'd you go to high school, right? Sure, it might be about, like, what shared connections do we have? But it's way more about, like, what was your neighborhood like? Who were your parents? <laughs> what can you do for me, maybe? I don't know. Uh, in D.C., there was a similar question. So when I was living in Washington, D.C., and would, you know, hang out with friends, or we'd go out or whatever, everyone wanted to know, what do you do? You know, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Everybody asks that all the time. It's a normal question. Many of us get asked all the time anyway. But in D.C., there was a certain weight to it. It was like, well, whose senator's office do you work for? Or what nonprofit do you work for? Or whose think tank are you a part of? You know, everybody wanted to know who is who and what kind of connection do you have and how can I use you <laughs> to get what I want to get done done, right? Right? 
And sometimes that's for good purposes, right? It's fine. Networking is a good thing. And sometimes it's not for great purposes. And so today I was thinking, or this week I've been thinking a lot about how can we hone in our questions to be a little bit deeper? And how can we measure ourselves in a way to make sure that we're really living into our purpose and not just sussing each other out based on the metrics of the world that we're all quite used to, right? We all are used to this anyway. So let's think of some new things. So Paul, in this letter to Ephesus, is encouraging us to think about our calling. What is it that we are called to do? And calling has a particular kind of feel to it, doesn't it? In ministry, when you're uh, going through the process, everybody asks for your call story. Well, what's your call story? When did God call you to this? When did God call you to that? And there's this really big feeling about like, oh, this call. And many of us have that in our lives for lots of ways, but we have a tendency of saying, oh, this thing is better than this thing, right? If you're called to this kind of thing, oh, that's much better than being called to this kind of thing. But that's not at all true. Did you read the scripture? Paul is saying that all of it is good, that any calling is worthwhile. Any calling is good because it comes for a bigger purpose, and that purpose is love. Of course, it's love. And Paul, you know, Paul, I have a a relationship with Paul that sometimes is good and sometimes isn't, and um, Paul's a complicated guy, but I think it's good to remember that Paul is a person. Paul is a person like us writing to communities is the first person to really be writing to all of these communities, at least the letters that have been kept. And Paul had this conversion experience. We've talked about it over and over again. And he was someone who persecuted Christians and then was someone who was converting people into Christianity later in his life. I mean, talk about like a total change, total 180. And Paul had a a job that he was doing. He was a tent maker, or a leather maker. It's, uh, translations differ in what that was. But he had a job. He worked a job like everybody else in the community and, and earned money with that job. And then, you know, I always picture Paul, like, writing these letters or telling someone who would scribe them, like, in the middle of the night after a long day of tent making. That he, and then he's writing to these communities. So I... I think it's helpful to humanize Paul a little bit (laughs) because he's just a person and he's working a whole job and then he's writing all these letters to these churches in very distant places, many of the places he's never even visited. And a lot of the letters he even starts with, oh, I hope to visit you one day, but this is what I've heard and this is how I want to encourage you. And so, with all that said, this is a beautiful piece that Paul writes. There's nothing really that I think we can pick apart and be like, ooh, that thing about women, or, you know, there's lots of those, but this isn't one of those. (laughs) This is such a beautiful piece that Paul, it feels like, is essential. It's essential part of what he believes, an essential part of what he believes we can all do, because we're all called to be a part of the body of Christ, even him even him, who took other people's lives because they believed in Christ. Whoa. Have you ever thought about that? That's amazing, isn't it? Anyway, so when thinking about Paul and when thinking about work and when thinking about calling, I think it's helpful to remember what vocation really is. So vocation is much more similar to calling and comes from the Latin root vox, which means voice. Calling is about listening. It's about the inside out. It's about knowing that we are a part of a bigger body, a body of Christ, to use Paul's words, and knowing that we each play a specific part, but we can only know that if we listen with a still small, to that still small voice that is in us, in that voice that is in us, vocation. It's a beautiful invitation to think about what it really means to give our lives to something. So when we're at a party, we often say what, you know, what do you do? We say what we do for work, right? What the thing is that the world has decided, oh, we'll pay you for this service. For some of us, our vocations, that voice that calls us to something, is also the thing that we do for work, which is a great thing. But today, I want us to consider that anything that we do can be a part of our vocation, whether we feel called to our places of employment or not. 
Sometimes I think we think, you know, some careers are much better and, than other things. And Paul is inviting us into considering how important each piece of the puzzle is. Now, of course, there's no problem with doing well in your career, with uh, climbing a ladder, with succeeding, with achievement. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's not the whole picture. And each part of the puzzle is important. We all know that, right? Amen? So one of the things that I loved the most about living in Washington, D.C. was my proximity to New York City. So there was this bus that would go from D.C. to New York. It took forever, but it was $10. So <laughs> I went on that bus all the time, and I would go to New York, and then I would go into Times Square, and I would take, um, uh, take myself to the TKTS line. If you've been to New York, you've probably done that because they have really discounted tickets to go see Broadway shows and plays and everything like that. So usually the bus was late because, again, it was a $10 fare. So I'd be like you know, running, racing through New York City to get to the TKTS line. And then I would just take whatever was the cheapest ticket. There's a big board, so you can kind of look, and they have an app now because it's the 21st century. But you can see, and then you can watch, like, oh, the Wicked tickets are gone, darn, or, or Book of Mormon is gone, darn, whatever. And they have all these different things. So you can kind of have an idea of what you might want to do. Um, but I would always just kind of go with what I, if I really had my heart set on something, obviously I would do that. But usually I would just take the cheapest ticket for whatever I could do. And often the play was starting in like, or the show was starting in like 10 minutes. So I had to, you know, race down Broadway to find whatever theater this was in. And then I would usually get some sort of beverage and sit there and just be like, whew. And, you know, for me, as a person who wanted to grow up being a ballerina, right, it was an amazing experience to be in New York, to think about all the performers, all the shows, all the people that made this city what it is. But often when I was standing in the TKTS line, waiting and looking at my watch and being like, am I going to make it? I don't know if I'm going to make it. Can I run that far? Where is that theater even? I don't even know. I would, be remar I would remark at all of the people that it took to make everything happen and all the people that were there. If you've ever been to New York City or any big city, even if you've ever been to Pride in St. Louis, there's so many people. It's amazing. You can just think about like, oh, each person has a whole life. <laughs> They have a whole set of concerns, a whole set of joys, a whole set of, of sadnesses, a whole set of friends and family and community that they care about. And sometimes I would just get so lost looking around Times Square thinking about, wow, like, wow, there's that celebrity that I love on this billboard or one that I don't. And then thinking about like, oh, a graphic designer had to make that and then someone had to print that giant bull bullet or billboard and then someone had to put it up and now a lot of them are electronics. Like, who makes sure all the LED lights work? You, know, you just get lost in like thinking about all the people behind everything that then the line is moved way up and you have to find yourself, oh, okay, I'm still here, you know, I'm still ready to get my ticket. <laughs> and it's the same, it's the same in a show, right? Like sometimes we're there to see the performer, like Taylor Swift, super stoked, we're going to see Taylor Swift, right? But then there's like all these background dancers and then there's a the choreographer, the costume designer, Bevan's son is in a play and was talking about the people who are helping him to do a 10-second costume change. <laughs> like, there's so many people that are involved in every little piece of life. And all of those people have a job. They're being compensated, hopefully, fairly, uh, in a way to be able to do that thing that makes a bigger picture of life. And it's a really cool thing to be a part of such a big thing, isn't it? And so if you think about any of your jobs, any of the things that you're paid for or were paid for if you're lucky enough to be retired, you were a part of a bigger picture. You were a part of something, and hopefully you cared about that something, but even if you didn't, you could still live out your vocation because your vocation is about love. So if you worked for a theater, you got to be a part of people letting go for a little while to remind themselves of something bigger. If you were a part of a bank, you got to be a part of how people manage their money and have hopefully help people to have some financial freedom in their lives, right? You can think about any of your things and how they, they can feed into the bigger picture of humanity. Vocation, this voice, this inner calling, is not as much about what we do, but how we do it, and how we see ourselves in the bigger picture. We can climb a ladder of success, and if we do it only for our own betterment, that is not following the voice of vocation. 
but if we're climbing the ladder of success because we're also bringing all these other people with us, if we're doing it because that is how our heart sings, if we're really good leaders, then we should be in leadership, right? And if you are a really good cleaner, you should be compensated fairly so you can clean well. Amen? Everyone should be able to work and live in a thing that makes their hearts sing, helps them to be a bigger part of a bigger puzzle in whatever things that they do best. And so today, friends, I want us to to remember that we don't have to be the performer. (laughs) We're not all called to be that. Thank God, right? It would be a really long play if everyone was was supposed to be the performer. And they probably would be ill-dressed, and nobody could hear them or see them. There would be no wine for you to drink or share. We all are a part of this bigger picture, this bigger, beautiful moment this bigger, beautiful puzzle and life of Christ. I love this part that Paul says. I'm just going to read it again. I beg you to live a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Turn to someone and say, you have been called by God. All of us have been called by God for something And that something might be really simple. It might be to show up and smile at someone who needs a smile. It might be to share with generosity some of the gifts that you've been given. It might be to pick up the phone and call someone that you haven't heard from in a while. It doesn't have to be huge, but it's something. And we're called in every moment to do that. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one Spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. Christ makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts to grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. So this week, as you go and do whatever you're doing in your week, notice all of the people who make everything happen. Maybe make a special effort to thank people who often don't get thanked for the things that they do. Take a special moment to thank Christine for her behind-the-scenes ministry at our church. Yeah. I know. (laughs) Christine hates that. (laughs) But it's important that we thank each other for the ways that we show up and we do the little things. Because it's all about the little things. And that's all of us can any, that's all that any of us can do. You know, an elbow is only good because of the rest of the arm. (laughs) And so is a knee and all these other things. Even if it's a big body part, it only matters because of the other body parts around it. So all body parts are the same. (laughs) They're all equal in weight and importance. And so remember that as you go forth through the rest of your weeks and you think about who you might meet and what you might do. Presley reminded us at our retreat that a calling is a relationship between you and a certain grace that you have been asked to bring into the world. A relationship between you and a certain grace you have been asked to bring into the world. It's so beautiful to think about all of the things that we do in a relational way, which that image of the body absolutely invites us to see that the elbow is only important because of the rest of the arm. I don't know much about what the elbow does except for being a joint, so maybe someone else can enlighten us about that. But I do know that it all only works together because it does its job. The elbow is only the elbow. It's not trying to be the knee or the hip or something else. (laughs) It's doing its specific role, and so can each of us. Sometimes I think it's hard to find out what we should do with our lives. 
And that's where I think Rainier Maria Rilke really comes and helps us to understand that a little bit. He invites us to live into the questions that sometimes it's not a specific thing that we should do. And it won't be for our whole lives, right? Hopefully one day we will get to retire. <laughs> and so our whole life should not be in the thing that we do for work. Our vocation, our calling is so much bigger. And so to live in the question of what is my purpose is a beautiful question that we can return to over and over again, never seeking one answer, but maybe many Vocation is about an affect, the way that we come into a space, the way that we might change a space, or we might be changed in the process. This idea of living into the questions invites us to really listen, to take a moment to know how our gifts might be different today than they were two years ago, or even last week. To continue to drink deeply from that well of questions invites us to always be aware of the ways that we can step into a situation and we can be in the moment and be that loving presence. Amen. You know, I always think that uh, it's helpful to have a poem <laughs> to think about some of these deep things of life. And this week, I found this one by William Stafford called Ask Me. You might be familiar with it already. It's quite a popular poem. And I think it's message uh, and metaphor of trying to find our purpose, our desire, our vocation by continuing to go into the deep well of questions is illuminated perfectly in this poem. So I invite you to open yourselves into a spirit of listening to hear these words from William Stafford. Sometime when the river is ice, ask me mistakes I have made. Ask me whether what I have done is my life. Others have come in their slow way into my thought, and some have tried to help or to hurt. Ask me what difference their strongest love or hate has made. I will listen to what you say. You and I can turn and look at the silent river and wait. We know there is a current there, hidden, and there are comings and goings from miles away that hold the stillness exactly before us. What the river says, this is what I say. This invitation to listen to this current that is always beneath the surface is where I hope we can dwell today and this week. To see how every little part is a part of the bigger current that we can't always see, we often don't even notice or pay attention to, but is there. That thread of life that binds all of us together and all of creation. That we can do our own part, our own small part in this river of life and be carried with God, with the body of Christ, which is all of us, and know that we are a part of a bigger story and delight in whatever part we get to play in it. And so I hope that you can sit in that, that you can find some stillness this week and connect to the current that is between all of us and all of creation. To find for another time, a new time, or find again your calling, your vocation, to listen to that voice of your life that is calling you to be a vessel of love. May it be so, friends. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Lauren. Can't believe you're not going to be here next week. It's so exciting. Asati, too. I'm excited for you. <laughs> this is the time we get to come. All the elbows and the knees and the hips come together and join... <laughs> The church, right? All right. I, I thought that was clear, but... Yeah. And gather around the table, knowing that we all come together to make this place, the church. Sit down and be set free.
vocation and calling. I remember the first time that concept came to me when I was a little child and someone said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I can tell you the internal version was, how the heck should I know I'm five years old? <laughs> um, and I have to tell you that I'll be 72 next month and I still say, how the heck should I know? <laughs> I'm still trying to figure that out minute by minute. And I was probably closer to it when I was five. And I knew the right answer that adults wanted to hear was probably not something like, I want to be a cowboy. Um, <laughs> and what I really wanted to do was I wanted to play, I wanted to eat, I wanted to sleep, I wanted to explore, I wanted to do whatever came right in front of me right then. And I hope I'm able to keep returning to that a little bit more and pay attention to what's in front of me right now and listen to it and respond to it because I think that's closer to what my real calling is. I also was thinking about how strange it must have been for the people at the table on the last night that Jesus was with them because most of them had a real different idea of what his calling was than the way it was going to play out. And you know what? He didn't like that a lot either. He spent the rest of that night after dinner praying that it could be changed because please don't let this be what it is. But if it is, let me do it. And he found a way at that Last Supper to remind each of us every time we come together to remember him, remember that he listened to his calling, that he was broken, that he blessed that in his way and said, when you come together, remember this too. In the same way, Deb, the word vocation kept playing over and over in my mind this morning. Because up until that time, only the priests and the rabbis had access to the holiest places. But what did Jesus do that night? He took the wine that was on that table. He said, this represents my life poured out for you. I am making a new covenant with you now. You have access. It doesn't matter who you are. Everyone now has access to this table. Please join me in prayer. Holy One, we thank you. We thank you for what you did, what you do, and what you are doing each and every day with us. We thank you for your presence, and we thank you that we have access to come to you directly, not through others, but each of us has direct access. In your name, amen. In a moment, the ushers will come forward. They'll have hand sanitizer to offer you, and they'll direct you forward. There will be two holders here in the front offering you from the plate either a wafer that you can dip in the juice or the two for one that has everything together that you can take back to your seat and partake with us at the end. The main thing that you remember is this table is not only for certain people. This table is for everyone. So we say each week, come as, come as you, you are, are believing, believing as, as you do. do.
God. Thank you for giving us each the call to be here together today, to come in together in community, to be reminded that our call sometimes is loud and sounds important, and sometimes it's quiet and it's under the ice, and we really have to pay attention to hear it. Let us keep seeking, keep learning, keep growing into the spirit that you intend for us. Amen. 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 I invite you now to share the peace with, you, with each other by saying, God is working through you. Come now to a time to give back a portion of what has been given to us. And now I'm going off script. Oh. <laughs> because I want to thank so many of you for your generosity. Because I see so many of you that joined us earlier this month on our retreat. If it wasn't for your faithfulness in giving, we wouldn't have been able to enjoy such a wonderful invigorating and spiritual moments that we had over the course of those three days. So if this means that you give an extra dollar or two dollars or maybe five dollars this year, please do so and I look forward to seeing more of your faces next year. If you're new to MCC GSL, we have three easy ways to give using your phone or your computer. First, you can text MCC GSL to 79 77977, then click the link that is text back to you. Second, you can open a web browser and visit mccgsl.org slash give. And finally, you can Venmo us by scanning the screen or searching for mccgsl. Please join me in our affirmation of generosity. Celebrating the power of resurrection Radically inclusive love and optimistic hope, we joyfully give to others, proclaiming in the faith in the power of Christ. Amen. Thank you, Kevin. Amen. Thank you, church. Let's rise together and close out our service with that uh, song, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. There we go. And uh, just time of recommitment.
remembering that you are a part of a bigger story, whatever part you play, and may you find stillness and rest to be able to hear that still, small voice inside you. May the peace of Christ be with you. Amen. Amen.